Hi everybody, my name's Tara, and this is my new channel, and I figured the best way to start off a new channel was to introduce myself. So again, my name's Tara, I am a clergy and a pagan, and a wife, and a mother, and a witch, and a community member, and all of those things. Um, I um, hang out in my garden, which is probably where you'll see a lot of my videos, because I love my garden, it's like my happy place. Um, it's also pretty quiet since I've got kiddos and a house full. Um, it can be pretty noisy around here. So, um, <clears throat> so I guess I don't even know where to begin. I've been trying to think about where do you begin when you're introducing yourself. It's really weird to me to talk about myself. Uh, so I guess here we go. <laughs> I um, am one of those people who's really lucky in that my parents allowed me to explore my spirituality very early on in life. I started going to church with the neighbors. Um, I really just was curious and and wanted to experience my faith and my spirituality in any way that I could. So I really just tried to find someone, somewhere, something. Um, my mom is what I would call a universalist, and she believes in a universal energy and that it has great power and it flows through everything. Uh, she doesn't necessarily believe in one specific religion. Um, my dad is a pagan, and uh, he gave me my first Scott Cunningham book when I was 11. I would definitely recommend anybody who's looking for a good book to start off, <clears throat> especially if you're looking for a Wiccan book. Scott Cunningham is a great author. Um, he's got a lot of great stuff out there. The Guide to Solitary Practice was my first book, and it definitely changed my view on spirituality. Before I had gotten that book, I was going... Uh, to church with friends. Um, I started going with the girl across the street. She went to a Baptist church. I went every Sunday with her. We did the whole thing. I loved it. It was so much fun. I really felt the spirit, I guess. Um, but then it came time to get baptized. Uh, and since it was kind of self-initiated, I felt like the people around me just assumed that I was going to do it. And so when my friend that I had been going to church with got baptized, they kind of assumed that I would do it too. Um, luckily, my mom is not very good at signing permission slips or like participating in that way. So um, aside from that, I never really pushed for it. I imagine if I had pushed for it and been like, yes, I want to do this, the pastor probably would have just done it anyways. But uh, that just didn't work out. And then because I didn't get baptized, it just didn't feel right anymore going to church. And I was kind of getting the, the shun, as I'm sure many of you are aware of. Um, so I stopped going to that church. Uh, and then I met a new friend, and she was Mormon. And so I started going to a Mormon church with her, which was a lot of fun. Um, I, I really enjoyed that the... There's a blue heron flying over me. Oh no, it's a black duck! Anyways, <laughs> I got a thing with birds. Uh... So, <clears throat> I started going to the Mormon church, and that was a lot of fun because I really enjoyed that at the Mormon church, the people got up and gave the sermon and talked about their experience and how they had connected with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and that it was people and not the pastor. Um, I also enjoyed the girls and boys stuff. I'm pretty traditional in the whole, um, I'm a housewife, that's what I do. That's what I've always wanted to do. I wanted to have six kids. I know I was crazy. I've got three now and I'm solid. <laughs> That's it. Um, but so uh, I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed going and being around a bunch of other girls and learning like that. Um, so that was fun. But, you know, friendships come and go and that one didn't last. And so and then my dad gave me that first Scott Cunningham book. And that was pretty much it for me. I read that book. I read it pretty solid, like straight through in one weekend, because I only spent the weekends with him, <clears throat> and I was fascinated. And from there, I just wanted more. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to experience more. I wanted to do more. Um, this was also a really rough time in my life, because my parents hadn't been making such great choices. There was a lot of drug use going on and drinking, and uh, it just wasn't a super productive environment. So... I kind of turned to my spirituality to kind of save myself. Um, I dedicated myself to the goddess in a very dark moment. I was about 11 or 12, so it wasn't long after I had gotten the book. I uh, it was late. I was sitting on the roof. It was raining. 
and I was just in this really alone place. And so I called to the goddess and for the first time ever, I felt that unconditional love. I felt it so deep that it, tra it transformed me in that moment. I <clears throat> went from being feeling alone and scared and all by myself to feeling empowered and like, you know what, I can do this and I always have the support of the goddess because she's not only all around me, but she's inside and I feel her energy all the time. And I don't, you know, <clears throat> and so that was really empowering for me. Uh, and so I went into this phase of life where I didn't give a fuck. I mean, excuse me, I'm sorry. I didn't care. I didn't, I didn't want to hear anybody's opinion. I didn't want to do any of that. I just wanted to survive and have fun and not be dragged down by the bad things that were happening around me. So I did. I just went out and I had fun and I did my thing and I hung out with my friends and sorry, I thought I heard my kids. It's like six in the morning. I'm like, no. Uh, anyways, so I, you know, I went through this long phase where I really just didn't care. And I was like, I'll do whatever I want. I'm going to be whoever I want. I don't care about other people's opinions. And it was funny. I don't think I'll ever forget sitting down with a friend of mine, helping her with her homework <clears throat> and her boyfriend coming over. Now I'm loud. I'm obnoxious. I am abrasive and overbearing if you ask people and, you know, in a good way, but uh, it was really bad when I was a teenager and I, I'll never forget sitting there. We were in the mall. I'm helping her with her homework and her boyfriend turns to me. He says, Oh my God, you really are smart. And I couldn't believe it. Like I laughed. I didn't know what to say to him. I was like, okay, bud. Like I just took on this really sense of, I don't care. And I'm going to do what I want. And I'm going to encourage other people to do what they want because you need to follow your heart and your soul and you know to be happy sometimes you just got to do what you want so that's really where I was at and I went through that for a long time um and I lost a lot of friends because of that I, but you know I no people around me I stopped talking to my family I just went into this much different place to try to be this different person that I thought that I wanted to be and I got married and I did the all of this stuff and then I realized that that's not who I wanted to be. I actually, I went to Dreamtime, which is a pagan festival in Paonia. I don't think they do it anymore. Um, but I went and I actually ended up going early to help set up the festival. And then I stayed for the festival and then I stayed after the festival. So I ended up being in Paonia for about a month and it was life changing. Um, being in the nature and being around all of those people and just being in this place. Um, I asked my husband at the time for a divorce. I, uh, changed my whole life in that month um, and that's something else I guess about me uh, I am a jumper um, my magical name is Phoenix and that is because I'll just ignite into flames and transform into something new and that's kind of what happened <clears throat> and during that transformation I decided that I actually did care what other people thought about me and that I did not want to be this overbearing crazy in your face like oh my god person because I had lost a lot of friends because of it and I you know was in a marriage that I didn't like and I was just in this place where I wasn't happy so again I like changed everything I moved from the city I was living in to a new city I uh, got a divorce I uh, just kind of moved forward I lived by myself for a while I did my own thing and without really thinking about it, I kind of shifted into this place of worrying about what everybody was thinking about me. Um, and so I also was doing a lot of learning. I got my bachelor's in nutrition and <clears throat> uh, nutrition and dietetics. Uh, so I do have like a science trained background. I also started a coven and we did a lot of great things and some wonderful people. Uh, the thing about a coven is that it is an emotionally, I don't even know what to word, if you're in a coven or you've been in a coven, you understand that the emotional bond that you create with the people in your coven is very, very strong and at the same time very, very sensitive and it's really easy to get your feelings hurt uh, and so in my place of I just wanted everybody to like me and I wanted to be happy and I wanted people around me to be happy I just wanted to please people but at the same time I've always wanted to share my faith and my faith is something that like I said I've always had 
and I, oh, can you hear the robin behind me in the garden? Oh, there he is. You see him? That's my robin. His dad lived here last year and, and his father before him. So this third generation robin. He's got a nest in my front yard. Little baby birds. They're so cute. Last night he was catching moths in the garden. I spent a lot of, and like I said, I spent a lot of time out here. So the, the birds are my, my pals. Uh, anyways, so. Uh, let's see, where was I? Oh yeah, okay. So I really was at this place where I... There were three things that I wanted to do. I wanted people to like me. I wanted to have this wonderful community. I wanted to have a family. I wanted to have six babies. I wanted the whole soccer team, the big farm, out in the country. That's really what I wanted. And then I wanted to share my faith. I wanted to teach. I wanted to clergy. I wanted to help people. And I wanted to be a healer. And so I got started nursing school. That was not for me. I realized about halfway through it, it would be the worst nurse ever. So I'd be sending people home. They like go home, drink some tea, eat some ginger, go to sleep. <laughs> and that's not what they want in the doctor's offices. So it changed. I went to nutrition school. I'm fascinated by it. I love microbiology. I'm just, it's amazing. But uh, I also found through those classes that a lot of my spirituality and my spiritual beliefs could find fact in science. Um, I love quantum physics. Uh, I love doing research. Uh, I love learning. Uh, that's just like a big thing for me. So um, I went through this really long period of time where I was learning and I was trying to please the people around me and I was really trying to push to share my faith. So with my coven, you know, we had a really rough beginning fighting and, and determining whether it was going to be a coven for us or a coven for the community and where it was going to go from there. Um, it turned into a beautiful thing and it created, we created a beautiful thing. And even though it was rough and hard and, and everything, it was, it was beautiful. And we started creating information and sharing things and getting out into the community and doing those things. Uh, but at the same time, it's really stressful, um, to share your faith like that. And then for me personally, because I'm so driven and I'm uh, a little manic and we'll get into that in other videos because it's a big part of kind of my practice and who I am. Uh, but anyways, so I get a little crazy and I get a little overwhelming uh, because I do like to do a bunch of research and just go, 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 go. And uh, which brings me to my final recent transition and huge change in my life where I'm starting this new channel and big things are changing and new things are happening. Uh, I uh, really came to a self-realization point that even though I've wanted to just have this open coven and share my faith and teach and practice and, and get out into the community, I was still trying to please all of the people around me and I was still trying to be what I thought the people around me wanted to be and I had stopped I don't even know how to say it so when you have kids um, people at some point come to you and they're like oh what do you do for you and what do you do for fun well for me what I do for me is my faith I connect with the divine I do some magic in my garden, I read about my spirituality, I meditate, I, you know, all of those things. I write. I do a lot of writing about, you know, uh, my faith and about spirituality. Um, and so all I wanted to do was share and share and share and share and share, and that can be kind of overwhelming. And you know, I kind of imploded. I got to a point where I felt so driven and passionate to share my faith and I was doing, I'm still doing this, but I'm doing a lot of writing and uh, a lot of this writing is, and see now I can't even think of the word for it, automatic writing. And so I'll just kind of get into it and then I'll come back and be like, oh my God, I just wrote 10 pages and I'll read over it. Oh, the sun's coming out now. Let's rotate. Let's see. Does that help? Maybe? What if we go like this? No, no. Let's go this way. Um, so I, uh, oh, see, now that the sun's in my face, I can't remember what I was saying. Anyways, 
So I was doing a lot of writing and I was doing a lot of reflecting and I really came to this place where I realized that my faith and my mania blend together in such a way that it's like it's like a flood and when the seasonal floods come through I can't help but go a little crazy so anyways in my most recent crazy and not in a bad way I just want to do a lot of work I want to get a lot of the stuff done I get really super hyper focused um, and by a lot of work, I mean like 20 to 30 blogs or letters or whatever. Um, and so, but in self-reflecting on all of this, um, I realized that I just get a little excited and that's okay. And that it's a healthy outlet for my mania and that I have to stop trying to fight that in order to please other people because it was making my mania destructive. So for all of you people out there who have some form of bipolar disorder or mania or seasonal depression or, you know, bouts of excited energy, um, I imagine throughout the channel there will be a lot of things on anxiety and mania and stuff, but just know that you need to find a way for you to deal with your mania in a healthy manner. And if the people around you can't see that, then that's that and you can't do anything but you you know try to communicate and I, and I know that that's hard especially when you're in a state of mania and if the people around you love you then they will support you or maybe they'll step back for a little bit and be like okay you're having your moment I'll see you next month and that's okay too and you have to be okay with that everybody's got to be okay with that so in this realization that this is what I have to do for me I also did a lot of communicating with the divine and a lot of meditations and I realized another thing. <clears throat> I realized that when I dedicated myself to the goddess, I also dedicated myself to the darkness. Now it took like 11 years for me to realize that I was going to need to work with the darkness and like connect with the darkness and my shadow self and, and all of those things, which again we'll get into. But, uh, so it took me like 11 years to even realize that I was doing that and then another 11 years to like do that and connect with the darkness and then recently in my newest enlightenment transition it was the divine god and the sun and that energy so now I feel like I'm balancing out my practice in this great way and I want to share that experience I want to share that experience with you and all of the other people in the world and I just want to be me and so I hope that you follow along in this journey um, there's going to be a lot of cool things. I've got big things planned, lots of schools and lessons and preschool and witch classes and amazing things. Festivals, I do a lot of festival work, at least I'm trying to. Right now with the quarantine, we all know how that's going, so we'll see how the pagan community chooses to move forward as we get through these trying times. Um, but, so, I guess that's a little bit about me. If you have any questions, I mean, just ask. I'm pretty open and honest. Um, I hope that everybody is enjoying June, because it's now June, and I will hopefully see all of you soon. Bye-bye.